The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Lorraine Underwood, and this week I'm going to create a face mask that scrolls your text across the front of the mask. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. When we wear a face mask, it muffles the sound of our voice, and it also makes it really hard for people who rely on lip reading to understand what we're saying. I have seen face masks that have like a transparent panel here at the front, but I've seen them kind of steam up and they also just look a bit strange. So my idea is to create a matrix, an RGB matrix of light that goes across the front of the face mask with a microphone inside the mask. So when I speak, it transcribes what I'm saying in real time across the front of the mask so people can read what I'm saying. We're also trying to keep eye contact on the face. I'm really excited about this project because it could end up being real useful to a lot of people. It involves some making, it involves shiny lights, and code. What else could you ask for? Let's see how we're gonna do this project. So we're gonna to have to attach an RGB matrix to a Raspberry Pi and a microphone, and the whole thing needs to be battery powered. So we're gonna to need to get some code that will take audio from a microphone and transcribe it into text, and take that text and output it to the matrix. That's no mean feat. Which is why a big part of this project will be testing. So we need to see how fast that transcribing can happen. Can it be done live? So as I speak, the text will come across my face. Will the battery fit on my face? You know, it's quite a lot of electronics or am I gonna have to have like a, a pocket here or something? There's quite a lot of things in this project that can go wrong, but let's do it anyway. <laughs> Here's a few matrices that you could use for this project. Here's an eight by 32 and an eight by eight. These are both flexible grids. So I think these will look really good inside the face mask, look really natural against wrapped around the face. This is an eight by eight solid one from Adafruit. We need to solder the pins onto that. So we'll do that now and I'll show you this one and this one working inside the mask. This is our matrix then. Let's have a look at the back. So we've got D in just here. So that's data in. So that's where I want to solder my pins on. So blue tack is our friend here. I'm just going to try and get a little ball so it's kind of steady there. And then another little bit for this to stick into. Kind of like that. There we go. So everything's kind of steady and not going to move. That's pretty solid. That was a bit of an awkward angle to get around, but I think I've got the, the three ones soldered without them touching each other. I melted that LED a little bit, but I think, I think that's good. Let's connect the matrix to the Raspberry Pi. For this test, I'm just gonna use a power source. So I'm just gonna have this barrel jack connected to the matrix for its power source. To connect the barrel jack to the matrix, I just got two male to female jumper wires. Then we're gonna connect the matrix to the Pi using two female female jumper wires. We need two wires, because we're not just connecting data, we need to ground the Pi to the matrix for all of this to work. Let's get going. So on the back of the matrix, I've also soldered on the other pins, the D out pins. So I've got connect, that gives me um, some more pins for the power. Uh, so I've got the black wire here connected to the positive terminal, so that's going to go onto 5 volts. And the white wire is on negative, so that's going to go onto ground. So that is our power source for the matrix sorted, so let's connect the Pi next. I'm going to connect ground, which is the third one down here on the right, and D18, pin 18. Um, which is the third one down from ground. So that is D in, bottom pin here, 
and this is ground, which is the top pin. So that's the Raspberry Pi connected to the matrix and the matrix has its own power source. So we're gonna need another power source for the Pi and that's everything connected. Let's get the NeoPixel library installed so we can test this setup. I'm following these instructions from this Adafruit page and it gives you a really nice um, bit of code here to test the NeoPixel. So I'm just going to copy that code and run that as my test. Okay, so you just have to edit the file a little bit um, to change the number of NeoPixels. So I have 64. There we go, and that's our grid working. Brilliant. So this matrix will be under a black cloth, so I'm gonna turn off the lights so you can see what this looks like. So that's the grid kind of in darkness. You can see kind of how impressive that looks. I've just got this Python file that's gonna show you what text looks like scrolling across it. So you can see, I think eight by eight might actually just work. I think that's very readable. It's not to maybe speed it up a bit. What do you think? Now we have the NeoPixel grid working, we're going to look at our code. So we need to transcribe the speech into text. We're looking at the library called Speech Recognition for this. It works with a free Google API just for kind of testing purposes. But any more than that, you need to sign up for the paid API from Google, IBM, Amazon, and there's a few others. I'm going to just stick with Google. Um, I found that one the easiest one to install. It lets you see the Python code. Um, you don't have to learn any new software. Let's get that installed and see how it works. So all of this needs to be sudo pip3. Install pi audio. Get flack. This is all for the audio. And finally, this is the Google API library that you need. And I think that is everything. Normally NeoPixels don't like to work with sounds, so you have to change some settings. So down on the very bottom of this config file, I've added this line here, and I've also uncommented out another line up further. There we go, HDMI force hot plug. So both of them need to be one. And also do a reboot of your Pi and you'll, everything will work. Make sure your microphone is plugged in before you restart the Pi. And the pixel grid should work fine then with the set with the audio. Let's test out our microphone just to see if it works without scrolling it across the screen. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so you see Google recognition things. I said, hello, 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 which is perfect. So now we're going to get that to scroll across the lights. Want to build the project in this episode? Want to download the code? Find the parts list? Want to ask a specific question and know this host will answer it? Simply take out your phone and point your camera at this QR code. This will take you right to all the details you need to get started. We'll see you on the Element 14 community. Hello, hello, hello. And there it is. Uh, it went a bit fast then, <laughs> but that's, that's it. That's the whole project. That's the basics, basic idea behind it. I speak into a microphone and it scrolls my text across the screen. Let's do this test again, but let's turn off the lights. 
Hello, hello, hello. Okay, that was pretty fast. Brilliant. So that was using um, Google's free software. The guides just say, use this for testing. Let's sign up for their expensive software, which gives you 60 minutes free a month. Then we can get the grid inside our mask and see how it all looks. Let me show you the setup then. So I've got a three times AAA battery pack here to power the matrix. I've just got some male to female jumper wires there. Then on this side, I've got the Raspberry Pi and a battery pack. And the ground and data wires are going into this side of the mask. So we can just put the mask on like that. I don't think it looks great. You know, I think the, the square is really, it's really kind of obvious. It really looks odd. Um, let me show you what the flexible grid looks like. So this is the flexible grid and I like this a lot better. So I think you can't really see it when the lights aren't on. You don't know it's there. You don't know someone's wearing it. Um, it feels more comfortable. It doesn't have any sharp edges. The mask also still kind of functions as a mask. So you can see my nose is covered. It's still kind of tight at the edges. You know, there's no kind of big air escaping. So it still works as a face mask. Let's get it connected and working. Test, one, two, three. My name is Lorraine. Welcome to Element 14 Presents. Test one, two, three. My name is Lorraine. Welcome to Element 14 Presents. Welcome to Element 14 Presents. Welcome to Element 14 Presents. Presents. Welcome to Element 14 Presents. Don't worry folks, I got the Element 14 working eventually. I used a PC transcription software, an ESP32 board, and the same face mask. I think this iteration of the project has a lot of potential. As there's no need for a Wi-Fi connection, you can access better transcription software, and the whole setup is much smaller and lighter. So here we are filming on location at my husband's work. So my husband has specialist software that transcribes his voice, that's trained to his voice. So what we're going to do is set up a profile for me and train it to my voice, but I'm going to wear the mask while I'm training it so it adds that kind of mumble. Hopefully that will make it transcribe more accurately. Let's see how we get on. I'm reading this text out loud, clearly and naturally. I will continue to use this tone when I dictate with the product. Right now, I'm giving Dragon a chance to adapt to my voice and audio environment. As I talk, Dragon is checking the quality of the audio input and adjusting some settings. Hello, how can we help you today?
Hello, how are you? In a galaxy far, far away, Is this the future of GP surgeries? Welcome to Element 14 Presents. Here's the setup for the doctor's face mask. So I've used a Wemos Lolan 32, which is an ESP32 device that works with Arduino. You have to solder the pins on yourself. If I was doing this again, I wouldn't solder all the pins on because you only need two pins. Um, these are actually sticking into my face during the demo. So we connect a male to female jumper wire to the data pin and one to ground into this RGB LED matrix and that's the data sorted out. Then we power the matrix. I've got a three times AAA battery pack here, which has a clip on it, which is really handy. And that's just going from a male to female jumper wire. This is quite a short cable. Just for this demonstration, you'd probably want a longer one. So it fits inside your mask. You also need to charge the Wemos. I use one of these small LiPo batteries. So the Wemos has a connector for a LiPo battery. That's the setup for the flexible RGB grid and a lot of grids that you find will have the same connectors. Let me just show you the Adafruit static grid next. So this you need slightly different connectors. So here you just need female, two female to female jumper wires and this one stays the same. So the battery stays the same. You have to solder the board. You have to solder these pins onto the board yourself. This one's also heavier and more sharp than the other boards but it's just a really good, reliable quality. Adafruit do sell the Flexible Matrix for $50, I've seen it in the US. So any ESP32 board will work with this. Once it works with Arduino and it has pins out to go to the NeoPixel board and you have some way of charging it, you don't have to use this Wemos, any ESP32 board with Bluetooth and pins out. This week, I created a scrolling face mask using this multicolored matrix and a Raspberry Pi. I managed to get my speech to scroll across the face mask. As you saw, it wasn't incredibly accurate. Short, simple sentences were pretty good, but anything longer or complicated, it just didn't work, even using the Google paid for service. If I had some more time, I'd check out the other services like IBM and Amazon. Even without the transcription service, I think it's still really fun to have a multicolored matrix inside a face mask. You could create smiley faces, silly faces. You could very easily add a couple of buttons and scroll please and thank you. It's just another way of communicating with a face mask on. What would you use this for? Let us know on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. See you next time.